With this video, I want to show you how you can utilize the test containers library for writing your integration test. As an example, let's have a look at the following application architecture. So we have a simple Spring Boot application where our users can connect to. So let's say there are REST endpoints they, they use to see data in their front ends. And uh, we get our data by connecting to a Postgres database. So that's how the application looks like in production. We connect to an actual Postgres database. But if you now want to write integration tests for our Spring Boot application, we have multiple options. So one option would be to pick an in-memory H2 database and use this for our integration tests. The downside here is that we are not as close as we could be to our production environment and hence testing against uh, not the same database vendor. This could mean that we also have to, to maintain two DDL scripts as we have to prepare our H2 database. So that's not the, the, the best solution we could have here. The other solution would be to actually use Postgres also for our integration test. But here comes the question, how can we uh, prepare a Postgres instance on, on demand and uh, fast without uh, much costs? And here the test containers project um, comes into place. So with test containers, uh, we can uh, write integration tests with the following setup here. So instead of our users accessing our tests, we will have um, integration tests that uh, access our endpoints or test behavior of our application. In the background, we will connect to a Postgres database, which is uh, running inside a Docker container. And with test containers, um, we will uh, have something that manages the life cycle of the Docker container, so we don't have to take care of, of starting and stopping it and mapping port and preparing other stuff. So this really simplifies the way we write integration tests. And to demonstrate this, I've already prepared a basic Spring Boot project here. So uh, there is not much added um, apart from choosing it in the start.spring.io, but let's go quickly through it. So first uh, we're using Java 11. Then here I've defined the latest test containers version we will need. So our application for now is just a simple JPA entity within a JPA repository to, to not make it that complicated in the beginning. Next I have also included Flyway. So Flyway will take care of uh, creating our our database tables. So also during integration test, we need some mechanism to actually prepare this. And if we also use an actual Postgres database, we also um, test on as an addition our, our scripts here that they work. Then the PostgreSQL JDBC driver. Next comes the test containers library. Um, then also uh, as I'm using JUnit 5 for this tutorial here, uh, they offer a JUnit Jupyter dependency where we can have an extension. So it's not much ceremony involved to um, manage the containers. And finally, test containers um, also comes with different modules. So one module is here, the Postgres module. So this will allow us to uh, more easily use Postgres. What you could also do is like use the core test containers library and specify image name and stuff and port mapping for your own. But this comes quite handy as this um, does a lot of things for us and um, and we can quickly access the Postgres database. And then finally, the here the Swiss Army knife, the Spring Boot Startup test, which will include all the de test dependencies we need. Let's take a look at the application. So as I mentioned, nothing special here. So we have a simple JPA entity to demonstrate that this whole setup is working. Next comes the book repository, also nothing special here. And finally, we have one migration script, which will uh, take care of initializing our table. So when you create a project with start.spring.io or inside your uh, IDE, what you will always get is this first basic uh, integration test, which just has at Spring Boot test annotated here. And what it tries to do is tries to um, start the whole spring context, wire all beans together and make sure your application can actually start. So if we now run this without further setup, we should see that this fails. And the reason for this is that 
for sure we didn't specify any data source URL. So that's the first thing we have to fix. And also there are some suggestions already by, by the Spring team. So they say there are different things to fix. This. The first one would be here, use an embedded database. We don't want this, but we actually want to use a Postgres database. And what we can do now, we can first register the test containers JUnit 5 extensions. So therefore use the add test containers annotation. And this is actually a uh, wrapper annotation and what it does underneath, it uses the JUnit 5 extent width and registers this annotation, which will then help us to, or which will take care of managing the lifecycle of the containers so we don't actually have to, to do it on our own. So next we have to define our container we want to use. Uh, let's make it static. So here we can now say Postgres container. So this is coming from the Postgres module of test containers. Let's call it container. And then we have to instantiate it. And now comes the additional part, what the module adds. So now it already has some uh, wither methods where we can prepare our database. So we can say with the username and pass in the username we want to use for this uh, test database. Password is also configurable. Also, we can specify database name. Let's do it test. That's it. So there are way more stuff to configure here, but for basic setup, this is enough. And if you take a look at the actual implementation here, we can also see uh, by default, it picks um, an image for us. So the default is the Postgres um, tag uh, with version 9.6.12. And if we want to override this, we could also use the um, other public constructor and pass in the, the Docker image name for ourselves. So if your application uses already Postgres 10, 11, or 12, or you want to use a custom Postgres uh, Docker image, then you can do it with the public constructor. But for our setup, the version 9.6 is enough. So having this here, we now have to tell this is actually a container which um, test containers should manage for us. Therefore, we need the add container annotation. And this will now ensure to start and stop um, the container for our integration test here. With this setup, we are now missing to actually configure our Spring Boot application. So as Postgres um, uh, will map the internal port of the Postgres database uh, to an ephemeral port on your operating system. Uh, we can't hard code any JDBC URL as this is quite dynamic. So on each test invocation, the port or the JDBC URL will look a little bit different. So uh, especially the port. And for this, we need a solution to dynamically uh, populate environment variables or properties for our application. And if you use a Spring Boot version, which is greater than 2.2.6, there is a nice um, solution for this without much ceremony. And this can be done with a following. So uh, let's go properties. So we can here use a dynamic property registry. This will ensure to populate different properties for us at, at the right time. So not too too late when the application is already started, but uh, when it's about to start. And here we can simply add any property we want. And for this, we use the well-known Spring data source properties. And here we just can reference to our container. And as this container uses um, the Postgres module, there's also already a nice method for us. So we can simply ask for the JDBC URL so we don't have to construct it for ourselves. If you take a look at this, um, as you can see here, this um, populates the JDBC URL um, depending on how the port looks like and how our container IP address is, and then also adds the database name. So this is quite uh, convenient for us. Next, besides the URL, we also have to specify the password. So either use a variable and 
reuse it or reference again to our container. Not username, but password. And also finally, we need the username here. So, and then say get username. And with this setup, uh, we ensure to dynamically adjust our properties based on our container. And with this, we can now try to start our application. And if we are able to bootstrap our application, we should see the following print output on the console. So let's start it. As you can now see here, there's a lot of log output already, which we didn't see before. Let's quickly wait. So first success message here is we were able to start our context. So Spring could wire all beans together, could connect to our database. And as you can see here, at the beginning of the, the test, there are a lot of output from test containers. So here you can see what it actually does in the background when it tries to first pull the image if it's not present and then also start it. So if there's something not working, this output here will, will help you a lot. And once this is finished, Spring boot kicks in and tries to create our application context. And as you see here, the normal output it starts. And finally, you can see the context loads. And let's add a final test to make sure it's actually working. So we can now try to auto wire our book repository. Let's do this. And uh, let's create a simple book here for now. And let's give this book a name. We don't have to specify the primary key as this is populated by the database. And then we can use our book repository to simply say save and save this here and now try to execute the test again. And you see now, good that it failed. So actually I, I did something wrong while setting up. So it complained here, it couldn't find the real relation book. So in our uh, init SQL file, we set books here, but JPA by default tries to find a table by the class name. So let's adjust this. We can specify here that our table name is book. And if we wouldn't, had such an integration test. I mean, we would have uh, failed quite early in our application, but it's uh, good to see this. So let's uh, execute it again and see if it's working now. You can see, we again see here context loads. So at least we were able to start the application context or a test could auto wire the book repository. So the bootstrapping of our JPA repository also works. And at least we could execute .save. I mean, there could be now an additional check to actually retrieve it again while first clearing the first level cache of the entity manager to actually make sure we can also read from our database. But for first test, this is enough. That's everything I wanted to show you for first introduction to test containers. Stay tuned for further videos where I will show more features of test containers and how you can integrate it to write uh, integration tests with ease.